My name is Sally Science, and I love it when you send in your curious questions for us to explore together. And today, I have another great question from my buddy Oliver. Take it away, Oliver. Hello, my name's Oliver. What do rhinoceroses use their horns for? What an awesome question, Oliver. Thanks so much for sending it in. Would you believe me if I told you that the rhinoceros uses its horn for so many things, it couldn't survive without it? Well, it's true. Biologists call the rhinoceros horn an adaptation, which basically means the rhinoceros lived in its habitat for a long time and realized it could live better if it grew a tool on the end of its nose called a horn. Just like the Ankylosaurus behind me grew all kinds of hard armor plates and spikes all over its body to protect it from hungry dinosaurs, the rhinoceros grew a horn to protect itself and its family. But the rhinoceros uses its horn for so many other things as well. A rhinoceros horn is made up of something called keratin, which is the same kind of stuff that you find in your hair and in your fingernails. And biologists have recently discovered that inside a rhinoceros horn, there's also something called calcium. And calcium is what your bones are made of. And there's also melanin, which you would find in your skin. Think of it like a pencil. Dark core on the inside and a softer outside. And like a pencil, a rhinoceros can actually make it quite sharp by rubbing its horns on the rocks nearby. And they use that sharp, pointy horn to dig. You see, rhinoceroses live in a dry, hot climate in Africa. And sometimes when the rain doesn't fall for a really long time, the rhinoceros has to use its horn to dig in the ground to find roots and water to drink. Rhinoceroses also use their horn sometimes to push branches that are in their way out of their way and to guide their little ones to safety. And sometimes rhinoceroses use their horns and their feet to test a big pool of mud to see if it's too deep before they plunge in and get stuck. Rhinoceroses don't have the very best eyesight and sometimes they might think they see something that's a threat and so if that happens they usually put down their horn and charge really fast to scare the thing away. And remember that rhinoceros horn is very strong and very sharp, and it would most definitely hurt if it poked you. Relatives of the rhinoceros have been on Earth for a really, really, really long time. Like, in fact, the very first rhinoceros was on Earth 55 million years ago. Wow! And they were big. They were, I mean, they were really, really big. They were like, 7.5 meters long and 5.5 meters tall. That's like a killer whale long and a giraffe tall. They were the biggest land mammal ever. How cool is that? But these days, there are fewer and fewer rhinoceros on Earth because they're facing some really difficult challenges. Like their habitat keeps getting smaller and smaller and there's people that are hunting them for their horns. Do you remember when we talked about ecosystems? You are not in one, not two, but a whole planet of ecosystems right now. Well, the rhinoceros is an awesome friend in our global ecosystem. And there's lots of people working really, really hard to make sure that the rhinoceros community grows strong and healthy again. So with that in mind, I challenge you all at home this week to think about how we can be better friends with the rhinoceros and all the living things in our ecosystems. Thanks so much, Oliver, for this really great question. If you have a question you'd like to explore with me, I would love to hear it. Please send them in. Take care of each other, friends. And this is Sally Science, signing off.